so what's up fellow youtubers welcome back to my channel today I'm going to show you guys how to uh, go about rendering on Adobe Premiere Pro and I hope you like my wallpaper alright let's get into this alright so what I have here is a need for speed payback uh, E3 gameplay clip and I already edited everything the very first sequence right here is already like edited um, so what I wanted to show you guys was how to uh, select specific parts of the clip to render you can do that as well as render the entire thing if you have like cuts and effects throughout the whole entire thing so um, I'm just gonna play it through real quick and uh, speed it up and show you guys what I edited and everything so <laughs> Okay, I don't know if you guys noticed there, but um, that was a very, very, very rough edit of uh, the car starting up. It started up normally, and then I slowed it down by, I want to say 60%, and then I sped it up by like six, like 600% or something like that. So I sped that up. So there was that. Uh, also, there was this right here. I want to say I, I either sped this clip up it's like a little cutscene of when the car takes down the Mustang takes down the the cars trying to intercept it but guys that's what I'm talking okay well I obviously sped it up <laughs> I couldn't remember uh, this part right here is just the cut I just cut it out of cutscene and here's the last bit right here <laughs> Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys. I just kind of edited everything through. The reason why I did that was because if I just put the whole entire clip here unedited, there's really no reason to render because there was no effects that had been made to it. There was no cuts or anything like that. So I had to make um, small adjustments to show you guys um, that it does need to be rendered. And other way you can tell that it does need to be rendered is if you look up here, on this yellow line you'll see green and you'll see red the green shows that it's been rendered um, and it doesn't need to be rendered uh, the red shows that it does need to be rendered so I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and so uh, to to basically just select on the timeline where you want the render to be you go to your keyboard and you use the letter I and the letter O let me just show you guys if you hit I, there it is right here. It just pops up on here. It's hard to explain, but that's just uh, where the render will take place, I guess you can say, on the timeline. So this grayish, white, or whatever you want to call it, uh, that's where the render will take place. And if you hit O, it will take it away, just like that. Um, and that's basically how you do that. Um, let me show you guys. Okay, so I have it up here again, and I'm going to go to the end of the red line. Right about there. I'm going to hit O, and I'm just going to I'm just going to render where this red line is. And to do that, go up to sequence. Uh, go ahead and go down to render into out. Um, actually, real quick before I do that, uh, render audio and render effects. Render audio obviously is just to render this part right here. It does not render the video. Uh, and then uh, let me find it. And then uh, render effects in the out. That is just the effect that you put on it. So like I sped it up, for example, it would just render the effect and play it back smoothly. It would it would not render the audio and it would not render the video itself. Reason why I uh, would say to do render in the out is because it's kind of in general it'll render video, it'll render audio and effects. So I would go with this right here. So go ahead and click that, and it's only 73 frames, a short amount of time. And uh, the less amount of frames that you select, the obviously the less amount of time um, Adobe will take to render um, because of the amount of frames. So the less the frames, the less time it takes to render. Um, 
And then let me show you guys one. It's kind of a it's kind of a trick, I guess you could say, that I um, I guess would be easier um, than doing the I and O thing. But if you go up here to where all these times and everything are, uh, if you hover your mouse over this right here, it'll turn into a red bracket just like that. Um, and you can just choose where you want your render to end and where you want it to get, uh, start. So that that's it's really more of a trick um, that I honestly didn't know until I found out I discovered came across it on accident. But it's a little easier than doing the I and O thing. I just use the I and O thing to just kind of pop the render up there onto the timeline. But this makes it a little bit easier. This makes it a little bit easier to kind of fine tune and select exactly where you want the render to be. Um, that's just a little trick that I learned as well. And it works the same way. Let's go up the sequence, end out, and then boom, it'll render. So that's basically how you do that. Guys, it's super simple. Um, there's really not that much to it. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know down in the comments. Also, if this video was helpful to you, let me know, let me know in the comments down below as well. And also, uh, let me know if there's anything else you guys want me to do uh, to show you guys in Premiere Pro. Um, as well as, uh, let me know if this video was helpful to you. And as always, subscribe to my channel if you're new.